Okay, lesson 14, Kriya. When we discussed the previous Kriya, I forgot Sutra 25, which describes the effect of Dauti. So let's go through that quickly. By the efficacy of Dauti, bronchial diseases, asthma, pliha, leprosy, and skin, similar skin diseases, and 20 other diseases brought on by phlegm disappear. There's no doubt about this. Energy follows thought. You focus on this part of the body. If you do that sincerely, I mean with intention, with purpose, energy increases in that area. When energy increases, the functions that are located there will improve, and that is what you see described here. So, the next Kriya is described Hatha Yoga Pradipika Chapter 2 Sutra 26, then Vashti is described. Seated in water up to the navel in the Utkatasana, insert a small bamboo tube into the anus and contract the anus so as to draw water in. Shake it and then expel it. Such washing is Vashti. Well, talking about creative visualization, try to visualize this. <laughs> Even what they added in between square brackets, which is not part of the original text. Shake it <laughs> and expel. <laughs> It's just too funny for words, and people actually believe it. I skipped the first part that was between square brackets, because in the text, the original text is without the parts in between square brackets. What is in between square brackets has been added later sometimes by ignorant people. Sometimes I read what is between square brackets when I think it is actually adding to the text, but when I think it is uh, distracting or distorting, I just skip it. So in this case, so as to draw water and shake it and expel it, that's just funny. But you can just uh, ignore that. So, Vashti, seated in water up to the navel in the Utkatasana. Utkatasana is the chair pose, you're squatting. They described a little bit between square brackets how to do that, but you know, that's totally beside the point. We start with Dauti. Shiva in, swallowing a piece of cloth. Shiva in. Pulling the piece of cloth out. Shakti out. Now, you suck up water through the anus. Can you picture that in this model? See what is happening? Suck up water through the anus. <laughs> Shake and expel. Now we're going somewhere. This is designed to make you familiar 
with Surya Bindu and Chandra Bindu. Through Chandra Bindu, Shiva comes in, Shakti goes out. Through Surya Bindu, Shakti comes in, Shiva goes out. And with next week, the following two Kriyas, you will see how genius this is. Because normally when, when, when this is taught at all, it is taught in a compartmentalized way, with each of the exercises standing apart from each other. I taught in that way in the past too, until I saw the genius in this whole model, the six or actually seven Kriya exercises all coming together into one. If you find it difficult still to, to accept the concept of energy, you literally use the visualization of water being sucked up in the anus and being expelled again. It's a very powerful visualization, very easy. A child can do it, so easy. Or actually better. For a child, this is easier than for an adult because adults have lost fantasy. Children are full of fantasy and are not thinking critically. You tell them to do this, they will just do this in a very effective way. So we will try to do that just like a child. No critical thought, just, just accept for at least um, until the whole picture becomes clear and we start with pranayama. You just um, give it the benefit of the doubt and play with it uh, like a child would. The first Kriya exercise called Dauti, swallow a piece of cloth and pull it out again. The second one is called Vashti, sucking up water through the anus, shake it and expel. It is a fashion these days to go to Phuket or Bali or any kind of tropical uh, resort, uh, join a retreat, very spiritual, join a retreat, where you are being told every morning to do Vashti, and they give you a medical device with which you pump water into the anus. It's a medical device for people who need to have their bowels clean for a procedure or when people are obstipated and um, um, basically do a bowel washing. Uh, it's called bowel, the, the last part of the intestines. Anyway, intestines, the, the, through the rectum, um, it's called an enema, right? Yeah. Enema. Huh? Enema? You yeah. pump in water and, uh, and, and you that's because of this theory about Vashti. But the same as with the piece of cloth, if, it is, if there is a medical urgency, you can use it as a procedure, but when it becomes a ritual thing, doing it every day, it will cause damage. And water will cause less damage than a piece of cloth being swallowed, but it will still disturb the the harmony in the, in the intestines. So it just makes more sense. Uh, if you can anticipate something being harmful, you just know intuitively that it cannot be yoga. It cannot be what originally the author meant with this, because yoga is not designed to cause harm, damage, on the contrary. So let me not forget the next sutra then. I like to just go on and actually do it. But the 27th sutra describes that by the power of Vashti, Gulma et Pliha, which is enlargement, enlargement of the glands and spleen, Udara, 
dropsy and other stomach diseases, and all diseases arising from an excess of wind, bile, and phlegm are cured. 28. This Jalavasti, when duly practiced, refines the bodily constitution, the datus, the sense organs, indriyas, and the internal organ, antakarana. It makes the body bright and increases the digestive power. It destroys all the disorders in the constitution. Wow, that is quite something promising. What you are doing here is activating Muladhara Chakra. Muladhara Chakra is at the foundation of your, uh, of your being, literally, the root of your being, but it's also the location where Surya Bindu is located. Surya Bindu is located in the center of Muladhara Chakra. So, um, The natural tendency for energy is to condense and manifest towards the bottom, materialize through towards the bottom. Here you start already with the process of reversing that. And the Sutra 28 uses the word digestive power. It increases the digestive power, which is a distorted translation of the original, because the original word is Agni. Agni is fire, and fire is often mistaken for digestive power. The two are related, but they are also separate entities. Digestion is fueled by Manipura Chakra. But when there is talk about digestive power or digestive fire, it's Agni, that is vital energy. We will talk about that next week, because then I will explain the phenomenon that occurs uh, when the lower part of the body is energized. If you have, uh, ma many people who are in Korea, they visit temples or they talk with Buddhists because there are many Buddhist monks, Koreans and foreigners alike. And Buddhists and also martial artists in Hapkido, they constantly talk about this phenomenon too. They talk about the Danjan. Uh, the, the Chinese word is Tanjen. The, the Japanese word is Hara. In, in the Orient, it's very in, important uh, uh, concept and they always point to the belly but when you ask where it's located some will say it's Manipura Chakra some will point at the navel the pekopi others will point at the lower belly so which is it? we will talk about that next week because the, rea the, the truth is it's all of them together this is a very powerful phenomenon that occurs that fuels spiritual awakening. We will come back to that next week, but that is what this is about. And that's why I said, wow, look at the promising effects that they gave here, that the author wrote down here. The the datus were actually mentioned in the handout of uh, Muladhara Chakra, but I didn't mention it in the lecture. But the datus are the building blocks of which your body is built. There are seven of those datus. Datus are in fact tissues. There is plasma, blood, um, uh, muscle tissue, fat tissue, brain tissue, nerve tissue or marrow, and the last one and the most complex and complicated one is sperm and ovum. 
So in increasing complexity, the, um, the datus are being described uh, symbolically uh, represented by an elephant with seven trunks. Um, this sutra tells us that activating Surya Bindu, allowing energy to rise up against the normal tendency of tamas, of condens condensation, leads to a much healthier, um, much healthier bodily constitution. All the tissues in the body become stronger and healthier as a result of that. That is why yoga practitioners generally will start feel healthier and stronger. Already from the very beginning that can be experienced. So that, that, is, that is amazing that it is actually so powerful. And this is not an exaggeration, it really, it really manifests, expresses itself in increasing uh, strength, health, well-being, sense of well-being. The next one that is mentioned is the sense organs, that is your eyes, your ears, your smell, your taste, touch. They all improve as a result of um, Agni, the fire, vital energy. Then the interesting one and complicated one is the internal organ, which in Sanskrit is called Antakarana. Internal organ is not an organ. And antakarana is the whole human being. That is a human being whose physical, mental and spiritual body are functioning as one. So that is the whole human being. So it's quite promising. This does not apply only to Vashti. It is in fact the whole of yoga practice. You cannot just isolate one aspect and just focus on that and expect so many good things to come from it. It is the whole of practice that, that leads to these kind of uh, positive developments. Antakarana, internal organ, is something that most people are lacking because either we are physically oriented or we are mentally oriented. And as long as there is no union between the physical and the mental body, the spiritual body is not active. When you practice yoga correctly, leading to sattva, fusion occurs between the physical and the mental body, and that fusion, based on sattva, leads to the opening up of the spiritual body. And when the three are in harmony, functioning as one, that one body, which originally came out of three separate bodies, that one body, that is the antakarana or the integrated organ. But it is the whole human being effect which suggests that there are human beings who are not whole. And in fact, the reality is that most people are not. Humanity is lacking the sattva to function as a whole. So very, if you understand what it is about, it's actually quite impressive what they are promising there. Good, that's what we're gonna do.